Welcome to part three of our series on absolute value inequalities. And we're just gonna look at a few more here just for a little bit more practice. Um, we have the absolute value of three X plus one is less than or equal to four. All right, so we saw in the previous sections that when we have a less than or a less than or equal to sign, this is gonna give us an and inequality. So we're gonna split this inequality up, this absolute value inequality into two separate ones. Um, where we're gonna drop the, abs we're just gonna take the expression inside the absolute value bars, which is 3x plus 1, and we're going to say uh, it's going to have two possibilities. It's either going to, or actually it's going to include two possibilities, because it's an and inequality. Um, it's going to be less than or equal to a positive 4, and we want the values of x where 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to a minus 4. So we want all the values of, of x where this expression um, has a distance of no more than four, of less than or equal to four steps from zero. All right, so let's go ahead and solve these. We can subtract one from both sides here. We have three x is less than or equal to four minus one is three. We can isolate our variable by dividing both sides by three, which we give us x is less than or equal to one. All right, so that's our first endpoint. X is less than one, less than or equal to one. Let's go ahead and solve the second one. Subtracting one from both sides, we have three X is greater than or equal to minus four and minus one is minus five. Again, we can divide both sides by three. Those two terms will cancel. So we have X is greater than or equal to a minus five thirds. So we can write these two endpoints in inequality notation as x is somewhere in between, or all the values in between, minus 5 over 3 and positive 1. All right, that's our solution in inequality notation. Now we want to look at it on a number line, or also called a solution graph. And that goes out in the negative direction. That goes out in the positive direction. We have 0 in the middle, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. So we want all the values in between a minus 5 thirds and a positive 1. And we're going to include these two endpoints because we have a less than and equal to signs. So minus 5 thirds is right about here. So we're going to put a bracket opening to the right because we're going to include minus 5 thirds and all the values um, larger than minus 5 thirds. All right, now before we shade, we want to find where the other endpoint is. And that's at positive 1. And I apologize, that's supposed to be a positive 1. Okay, so we're going to include positive 1 in all the numbers or all the values that are less than positive 1, including it in the endpoint, and we just shade in between the brackets. That is our solution interval for this, for this uh, absolute value inequality. All right, we've done several of these. Let's just do a few more for practice. Let's take a look at the absolute value of x divided by 3 minus 3 is less than five. All right, so we have another less than, another less than inequality, which means we're gonna have another and inequality or and compound inequality. So let's go ahead and split it up into the, find the two endpoints and we're gonna shade in the, uh, the shared region. So we have X over three minus three. We want it where it's less than five and we want the point where X over three minus three is greater than a negative five. Both of these are within five steps of zero. Talking about distance when we're referring to absolute value. All right, so let's go ahead and add three to both sides. So we have x over three is less than, uh, five and three is eight. We can isolate our variable by multiplying both sides by three, which cancels the denominator. So we have x is less than three times eight is 24. We're going to have to scale accordingly because we have a pretty big number here. All right, let's go ahead and add 3 to both sides over here. Let's find our other endpoint. So we have x over 3 is greater than minus 5 and positive 3 is minus 2. Let's go ahead and multiply the entire inequality by 3, which will isolate our variable. So we have x is greater than 3 times minus 2 is a minus 6. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and write this in inequality notation. So all of our values x are going to be in between minus six and 24. So this is what we want to graph on a solution, graph on a number line. 
Let's go ahead and make it kind of long, because we got 24 of them. Um, we're actually just probably going to scale it in twos to make it simpler. That goes in the negative direction. That goes in the positive direction. All right, so we have. Let's put zero here, and we'll just scale it by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. That's twenty-four, and that keeps going in the positive direction to positive infinity. All right, so we want all the values um, that are in between minus six and twenty-four. Now we're not including the endpoints, so we're going to place parentheses at those two points and just shade the values in between. All right, we should know how to do all of this. It's pretty simple. We're just using a little practice here. Let's take a look at one more. Let's say we have, oh, excuse me, we have the absolute value of 2x divided by 5 uh, plus 2 plus 2 is greater than 3 over 4. All right, so we have a few fractions here. It's nothing to write home about. We know how to deal with these. Um, but what we really want to um, identify is that we have a greater than sign, which means we're going to have an or inequality, um, which means we want all the, sh all the, all the shaded regions. Um, we're going to have two of them, but the shaded regions that include all the values um, that are more than three-fourths steps away from zero. All right, so let's go ahead and find those values of x, which makes that situation true. So we have 2x times or divided by 5 plus 2 is greater than 3 over 4 or 2x over 5 plus 2 is less than a negative 3 over 4. All right, so we have 2 to solve here. So let's go ahead and do so. Subtract both sides by 2. So we have 2x over 5 is greater than um, we can convert uh, 2 into 4 over 2, or, or 8 over 4, excuse me. So we can have a common denominator here. So minus 8 over 4 and a plus 3 fourths is a minus 5 fourths. We can uh, multiply both sides by 5, which will cancel that denominator, which gives us 2x is greater than 5 times minus 25, or excuse me, times minus 5 is minus 25 divided by 4. We can divide both sides by 2, which isolates our variable x. Um, instead of dividing here, uh, let's go ahead and uh, change this to a rational number so we can multiply in the next step. So we have minus 25 over 4 times um, we flip this denominator and multiply instead of dividing by a rational number. Makes it 1 half. Uh, we're moving this over here. So we have x is greater than uh, minus 25 over 8. All right, so that's our first endpoint. All right, and we want all the values that are greater than minus 25 over 8. So that's the first endpoint. Let's find the other one. And we're going to need a little room here, so let's go ahead and clear some of this. Let's clear this. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve our second, uh, the second part of our or compound inequality. So let's subtract both sides by 2 or minus 8 over 4, same thing as 2. Those two terms cancel, so we have 2x over 5 is less than a minus 11 fourths, just combining these two fractions here. We can multiply both sides by 5, which will cancel this denominator, so we have 2x is less than minus 55 over 4, just multiplying both sides of the inequality by 5. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2 to isolate our variable. So we have x is less than, let's tra change that into a fraction so we can do the same thing. We can multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. That'll give us x is less than minus 55 over 8. Okay, so that's our other endpoint for our number line. So let's go ahead and graph this thing and be done with it because these are getting kind of nasty. All right, so let's, uh, this is mainly going to be in the, or actually all going to be in the negative. So let's put zero over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is minus seven right here. 
Um, we have minus three right here, one, two, three. Okay, and this goes in the positive direction. All right, so we want all the values that are greater than uh, minus 25 over eight. Minus 25 over eight is roughly right about here. And we're not gonna include minus 25 over eight because it's just a greater than sign. So we're going to put a parentheses opening to the right. And we want all these values to the right of minus 25 over eight. Minus 55 over eight is not quite seven. Uh, we want all the values to the left of this point right here. We're gonna put a parentheses because we're not including it in our solution set. We're gonna just shade to the left. All right, so um, get familiar with uh, you know using ugly numbers. Uh, that's actually a way of life in the real world, um, but we should know how to use these by now. Um, we're just uh, solving and graphing absolute value inequalities um, by taking uh, two different possibilities. We have the and inequality, and in this case we have the or inequality, where we have two separate regions. So look over these videos a few times before we move on. I'll see you soon.